Hello, Evergreen. Good evening. So uh, we're going to keep gardening. We are. We're going to do that. Um, uh, I Today I had a, a several interviews. I was doing podcasts and such. And uh, so I've been talking a lot today. But uh, then I got off those podcasts. And then I was talking with Jen and about what we do tonight. And I thought you brought up a really good topic. And I think sometimes we are so used to doing things that we forget that it might not be normal to other people, that there's just kind of habits of what mm. we do in life. And one of the habits is just to pursue things by faith and be willing to do something in the midst of chaos, mm. uh, just to take this faith step. That, that That's just kind of how we approach something. You'll see craziness and chaos or mess and just an overwhelming problem and to do something. And I think mm -hmm. you even were talking about not just to do something, but that to realize that what you said, even the, the smallest of something or even what in the smallest thing, we don't know, like the impact that that can possibly make. Yeah. Even the, the small things, the very small things, the little things. And mm -hmm. again, even in calling them little, yeah, it doesn't mean they're insignificant. It just means they're mm -hmm. little. It, you know, I was thinking about uh, for humans. When do we think about the preciousness of a human mm -hmm. when they're just a little baby? Yeah, it's tiny little. Mm -hmm. And God is doing stuff in your life and in yeah. my life that I think we just don't even recognize mm -hmm. because it's so small. I, I actually, as I'm even talking, I see it as we just kind of are like stomping on it. We don't even <laughs> realize. Yeah. Uh, but that God is doing little things that are incredibly important are things that we have a difficult time seeing unless mm -hmm. we really key in on yeah. that are crucial to our present and our future. Well, I think, you know, for any of us who have experienced loss or grief, um, that's something too that, that I've been thinking about lately. It's those little things that we tend to not think about until after somebody's maybe gone or unable yeah. to do those little things or to be that little part of our lives. And we, we all of a sudden realize that huge impact that those small interactions, those sort of everyday yeah. sort of things, you know. you know, this is almost like perspective though, isn't it? That depending upon how you look at it, it looks little mm. or large if you see it from the right perspective. Mm -hmm. I even know uh, from the people that I know the best and love, there's things they do that are incredibly significant to me but if I were to ask them about it, they're like, oh, that's nothing. Right, right. So for them, it's like little, it's just, mm. ah, it's just something I do. Yeah. But for me, it's that is so big for the influence that has on my life. Absolutely. And I think you guys can think of that. There's other people where you're constantly, if they only knew what a big deal that is to me, how important it is mm. what they do. And at the same level, they might be saying to you and you're like, ah, you know, that's just something I do. But for them, it's incredibly important. And you might say, how does this relate to gardening with God? But this is something that kind of all came to mind for me when I was out in our front yard. And I almost felt bad bringing this up because I didn't want Doug to think that this was like a small thing because it did take some effort and some doing and some work, right? But out in our yard, in the corner of our yard, in an area that wasn't really used all that much, you um, dug out and created and bought all of the stuff that was needed for a little fountain. Yeah, um, It's kind of a rock fountain. And I was out there and I realized, though it's kind of a small corner of our yard and it's just a little fairly small fountain. It's not like a huge amount of rockery or something, It you know, but out in the yard, I could hear it even from like 50 feet away. I could hear the trickling of the water. And we've looked across the yard and we see the birds bathing in this little fountain. And that's brought so much enjoyment. And then just the sight of this little shoot of water spilling over some rocks that we've even collected over the years that are, are pretty and have memory attached to them. Like that's, it's, it's made a big impact on our yard. And it's a very like contemplative sort of space and contemplative sound and sight for me now so hey i got an idea we're gonna stop and i'm gonna show it to you i think she's done a good job of explaining it <laughs> yeah i don't know if we'll get the perspective but we're going to just show you a little clip of what it looks like okay here you go
All right. I, I think you did a pretty good description of that, <laughs> at least if I take good video and show it to them. Um, uh, one of the things, though, as you were mentioning that, and we're going to get some scripture with this, mm -hmm. is I felt really foolish doing that mm -hmm. because I, in the video, I just show you that our yard gets overrun. And neither of us have this great desire to be wonderful landscapers. We do not. We're the opposite of manicured. Right. Even and, when we've put some effort into an area, it's still not a manicured space. Yeah, it's not woman manicured, manicured. It's just not, uh, if we got time off, like we're out visiting uh, other places than our, our yard. And I think even this year, it was like, I was, I took you around to mm -hmm. show you the damage. I'm like, how are we going to get this thing in order? Like, look right. at, we like, need to rein in some of those what, areas. What are we like going to do? And so we went through this whole thing about all the stuff we're going to do. And then the next day I'm like, I'm going to make a fountain. And, <laughs> and that is not logical. It's not, I mean, <laughs> so other people might be, well, before you make a fountain, why don't you just kind of get things a little bit more in order and not in chaos? But that was on my heart. And as I was mm -hmm. doing it, I felt embarrassed. Like, and I even was telling you, like, you're like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, I'm kind of like hesitant. Oh, I'm just working on something. Because I, I don't even, I'm nervous about how this thing mm -hmm. will look out. Not that you're judgmental or critical, but I feel kind of foolish. And even to my neighbors, it's like, you know, are you going to mow that lawn now? You know, there's a part of me where, what is he doing? And I'm digging this hole. And I, and we, we built that. We made that. And, but as we did that little thing, mm -hmm. Uh, it, it, it's right. It, it did a couple things. Like one, in and of itself, it has value. Even if everything else is in chaos, we got that nice mm -hmm. little place in our yard. It actually is doing more than we realized. Like we didn't do it to have birds come there, but now we have, and the birds are annoying me a little bit because birds like to do other things near a fountain as well. But it's kind of cool. They're bathing in it, and playing around mm -hmm. in it. And it's become this little sanctuary of this, this tiny thing there. However, also it's encouraging me. Like mm -hmm. that's the first sign of, of life mm -hmm. as far as uh, doing something in our yard in a long time. And so seeing that, I'm like, you know, we need to work on the place right next to it. Let's, yeah. let's do that. Let's yeah. have something that goes with it's it. It's kind right? of like spurred us on, right? Yeah. To... And so uh, as Jen brought that up, it really is to me a, an example of, of faith that mm -hmm. there's an aspect of faith where you just, you don't see it yet. You don't know what's going to happen next, mm -hmm. but you have a desire. And by faith, you move to bring that desire into being. And yeah. um, I think some of you know, oh, I think I know what scripture he's <laughs> going to use here. Uh, but we know Hebrews 11, one says, now faith is the certainty of things hoped for, a proof of things not seen. And we wanted to, in a very simple way, to encourage each of you to do something. Mm -hmm. uh, we can get overwhelmed with this world. I, I don't know anyone who doesn't just, you just look around. I mean, we're just talking about a yard, right? But you can look around at humanity and just be in a mood of, what mm -hmm. are you going to do? Yeah. Like, how are you going to change this thing? Mm -hmm. And so what happens is we get frozen. We're just like, yeah. I don't know what to do. It can happen in, a, in relationships. Your marriage can be in chaos, your relationships with others can be your own self, mm -hmm. and you get frozen, frozen in a kind of a place of despair, of mm -hmm. um, self-loathing, loathing of others, loathing of yourself. Yeah. We know this even with addiction cycles, like people can just be, oh, I know it's terrible, what am mm -hmm. I going to do, it's hopeless. But the thing is, in order to move forward, you have to take the next step. That's so good, what you even said about addiction and and just even like life circumstances. And I tend to get overwhelmed. And I think like, and once again, kind of going back to the gardening sort of thing, I want to create something that's like a big overflowing, like beautiful hanging, mature hanging basket, right? That just has like cascades of flowers and all this beauty and variety. And um, sometimes it's a matter of like buying that one little single pack of pansies. <laughs> And then just appreciating that or giving somebody that little, you know, that small bouquet yeah. and just trusting 
that work to God, trusting that that's enough beauty, that's enough of a step to take for today. And, and, you know, speaking of like addiction and relationships and other like mental health concerns, that next step that puts us on like a path of wellness, or that next step that puts us on a path of connecting with someone, encouraging someone in their faith, encouraging someone just in their outlook on life and how those things are so incredibly important in the eyes of God. And if we have spirit eyes, we don't know, we're we're just following through on the next thing, but we don't know what kind of immense, wonderful flowering basket that might even turn into. The next step is the only step you can take. And I think even when it comes to spiritual battles, uh, God has a next step for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Satan, the demonic, darkness doesn't has no creative power. Satan has no creative power. Uh, the only thing that the Bible talks about with Satan or the demonic or evil is that the goal of evil is to mar and to confuse and to twist mm-hmm. and to distort and to really hold you hostage, to hold you bound. You know, one a definition of being bound is that you're stuck. Mm -hmm. A bound person can't move. A bound person can't make decisions. They can't take that next step. And the enemy often Mm -hmm. wants to have you in that place where it's just hopeless. I can't do anything or until I can figure things out, until I can (laughs) make sense of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, some of you who want to organize everything and you can't. Instead, faith says, uh, this is what I want you to do. And even if you haven't seen it, I want you to do it. (coughs) <coughs> sorry i love what you're saying and this is something we didn't even talk about earlier but a friend of mine had posted this kind of um call for people to flourish and flourish the opposite of flourish is languish and as you're speaking like those two words come to mind to languish away is to just waste away and that's where the enemy comes in and causes us to just become still or to decline Um, and to just languish away in that state of being overwhelmed versus the Lord can bring about even through small acts of faith and incredibly vibrant, flourishing Mm -hmm. work. So, you know, in this sense, it could be whatever the situation is, there's nothing there and ask the Lord, what do you want me to bring about? Mm -hmm. Evidence of things hoped for, substance of things not yet seen. You're not going to wait for it to happen without you. You're just, I'm going to do that. Uh, I I think about you might be in a school environment where it's just a very sad school environment and there needs to be some joy or there needs to be some arts and crafts. There needs to be, and then you just do it. You create that fountain. You create that space. It might not even be accepted, but you try. You Mm -hmm. attempt to bring life or light to that situation. Amen. There's disconnect. And so you do something and it's so disconnected. It's like, I can't even begin. So you do something one form of connection a little note that says hi how are you doing Mm -hmm. after 20 years of not talking whatever it is Mm -hmm. where by faith because it's not seen again it's literally not there Mm -hmm. and you're going to feel that way you're going to feel foolish you're going to feel like why are you doing that don't you see how crazy this place is like for me Mm -hmm. you see how this yard why are you you're building a fountain on i'm sure that's going to go well (laughs) but you just do something by faith and yeah. as you said there so well, Jen, of, as far as, you know, we have these big grand ideas, it doesn't have to be a big idea. It can be a little idea. Mm-hmm. And this is what scripture also talks about, that faith comes always in a very small seed, mm-hmm. regardless of how big it grows, faith comes in a small seed. So let's look at that. Luke sixteen ten, whoever is faithful with very little will also be faithful with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. I know that goes in the context of how someone is is dealing with money. It also works like with the story of the talents, right? Where the master gives different talents and some people invest those talents and some people hide them and bury those talents. This is how faith is activated. Every single person listening, you Mm -hmm. have a desire, you have a spark, Mm -hmm. There's something. And if you're waiting for it to get bigger, if you're waiting for more resource, uh, you're not living in faith. Uh, You know, I I have this in, I got the book sitting next to here because I did a few interviews, but this is a faith step, Mm -hmm. this this book. It's in the light. It's hard to see. There you go. (laughs) So um, 
<clears throat> I talk about these huge trends in social media online where it seems like everyone is engaged in toxic behavior. And then I'm writing on my keyboard by myself in my house mm -hmm. about how we can change the dialogue and we can create a place of light and life in our social media presence. Mm -hmm. In some ways, that's like developing a fountain in the middle of this, you know, what? A garbage pit. <laughs> it's, it's putting together these flowers as, as tires are burning all around us. It's what are you doing? But, but at some level, you're making a prophetic statement of this is what it's supposed to be like. This is who we're supposed to be. And you're calling people to that. You're calling a prophetic future into existence. Mm, that's good. And you're establishing, you see this little place that looks pleasing and beautiful. This is what the land is supposed to look like. Amen. And I'm going to do my part. And anybody else want to do their part? Mm. And other people begin to do their part. And then you begin to see things rise up. You actually begin to see the hand of God. You begin to see, you know, in the first book I wrote on uh, the community of God, I talked about that we're all of these individual pixels on a TV, right? We're just one little pixel. A television is a bunch of pixels that come together to form a picture. Now, we may live in a time where people are not being obedient to God's will, but we're still called to be obedient, mm. which means to place ourselves on the screen, on the painting, on the picture where God wants us to be, to be people of faith who let the kingdom of God come through us. Amen. If others begin to do that, eventually a picture begins to form and we see a bigger picture. But all of us do that by faith. So whether anybody else listens to God, I still need to image him on earth for people to see his beauty, to understand that I am motivated by his kingdom. When other people begin to do that, we call it revival, mm. and we begin to see the face of God or the hand of God. Amen. This doesn't rest just on you. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just rest on me. But what can you do? You can do your best, and you can do something that might look very little and small and insignificant to others, but it will produce a tremendous harvest. It'll be like that mustard seed, the smallest mm -hmm. in the garden, but grows to be the largest. Let's look at that. Amen. Luke 13, 18 through 19. Then Jesus asked, what is the kingdom of God like? To what can I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that a man tossed into his garden. It grew and became a tree and the birds of the air nested in its branches. Mm -hmm. I think, Jen, one of the reasons you brought this up is you were thinking about how some little things that have been done in life actually over time yeah. have produced really tremendous fruit. You're mentioning with those planters, these little pansies that you yeah. planted, that they keep coming back. Yeah, I was thinking, um, I'm not great about, well, yeah, I guess in general, we've let people know that we kind of just let things go sometimes. But I do have some planters out on our front porch and we let those just go completely dormant over the winter, just dead looking. But when that first little plant, some of them come back. And even though the planters have been like frozen and covered in debris and whatever, all winter long, hammered by the rain and snow. Um, when one of those first little flowers comes back, what a huge impact that makes. I mean, I love to just look out there and like, oh, look at that little flower. Look at that little vibrant spot of purple and life that is growing in that desolate place. And how much hope there is in that little tiny expression of life and beauty. Amen. We want you to realize that God has given you a seed of an idea. Mm -hmm. He's given you a thought of something beautiful or noble or pure or lovely, something of substance that he desires for you to plant. Uh, he desires for you to create or to facilitate that others can create. Yeah. I think about it. I don't think we're ever going to get to some sort of landscaped reality of our existence. But, you know, whatever that plan is, if you were to say, oh, these are all the different plants we want, all the different ways we want things to look. When it comes to faith, it's not where you get it all at once. Mm -hmm. You just do the first thing. Mm -hmm. You do the first thing foolishly, just believing that the rest will come. But even if the rest doesn't come, I'm going to do something by faith. Yeah. Now, I just want you to think about that. And we're going to pray in a couple of ways. One, that God will show you something he's already placed on your heart. 
And sometimes that's a problem. Like you see a problem, you see an area where you're, boy, I, you know, you, you, whether it's something in your neighborhood, something with someone else where you're, boy, that there's something lacking there. Mm. There's something needed there. Uh, let God reveal to you that problem and then let him reveal to you the thing that he wants you to do. Because I think for some of you, there are things that you've wanted to do, but you're waiting. Mm. You're waiting for something else to happen. You're waiting for more resources. You're waiting for more people. You're just waiting. And can you be willing to just say, you know, I don't see it right now. and I'm never going to see it because faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the substance mm -hmm. of things not yet seen. Amen. And so I'm just going to move and plant that seed. I'm just going to do it. I'm just everybody's going to be, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm putting a fountain here or I'm putting a flower bed here. It might be that simple. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I don't see any tutors in the school, so I'm going to start offering to tutor. What, whatever the issue is, it can, be as, it can be as seemingly super practical to even also very philosophical and hard mm -hmm. to understand in tangible ways where you're just going to start behaving in a certain way or acting in a mm. certain way with resource can be like that. You can say, I don't have much money, but I'm going to take every week, I'm going to take $20 and I'm going to give it towards this thing. Mm. I'm going to purchase this with my $20 and bless certain people with it. I was thinking about like creative expressions and a couple of you that I know have put works of poetry out there that just brings like just, this beauty and this depth, even when we talk about like even social media and to have that spot of beauty and rest and peace or admonition that, that just like spurs people on and brings them hope. You don't know the outcome of it. We joked and again, I, this is such, you know, to me, I'm like, it's just a small little fountain, but the concept is kind of <laughs> funny to me because it is, it became, it's, we're looking at it and we're like, oh, hey, that makes kind of a lovely noise. I didn't think about that. That's kind of nice to hear that noise when we're outside. Hey, look at the birds are messing around with it. That's kind of cool. And then it also spurred other things in us. Hey, well, why don't we put some rocks around that? And maybe we can put some bark over here and uh, other work is rising up in us as we see that. That's what it's like to live by faith. You don't know what's going to happen. You're just going to take that first step. And then as you see things happen, you'll be like, oh, I didn't know it would reach this person. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know this would happen. And, and you're going to find other ways to build faith around that faith expression to, for it to expand. It's yeah. going to have a fruit that is something you haven't seen yet or even imagined yet. Amen. It's our job just to be mm -hmm. faithful. You have a seed and you really don't know what that seed is going to become, but you have a seed of faith that you're going to plant and God will produce. He'll help it grow in ways that are beyond really what you can imagine. Amen. So I want to spend a little bit of time praying here. Mm -hmm. Let's have this be productive, not just, oh, that's a nice message. <laughs> uh, and don't worry, this isn't so God can give you something you got to do that you don't want to do. Uh, the Lord might even confirm for you that you've been really living by faith and to treasure the little things. It might mm -hmm. just be to show you, look at all the little things that you've done. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, let's just do this in prayer. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I do see that, Lord. One, I think you do want to show people, remind them of the little things right now. I just ask that you bring that to our memory, mm -hmm. the things we did in faith. And that's just a confirmation too, because that is exactly what I was just thinking of, of looking around. And this isn't to add another thing that you need to do or to be seeking out to do, but Lord, thank you for bringing to mind the little things. And I just thank pray you, that Lord. you would do that for our listeners right now, the little thank things you. to just um, encourage folks that the little things that they are doing really, really matter. Right. See thank those you, little Lord. things, see those little things. Don't worry about the, the, potential or what they're going to turn into, but rest in knowing that you're faithfully doing those little right. things. Thank you, Lord. Along with, and some of you, even you need more time than what we're going to give you here. So if you need to even just right. jot down or go back to these different categories that one, see the little things that aren't little, right? But that God has done, they seem little, but the amazing fruit. Uh, could you also remember the things that you've stopped doing, mm -hmm. but had value? Thank you, Lord. Would the Lord remind you of that? Thank you, Lord. Not to condemn you, just to remind you 
remind you of the things and maybe that's going to require mm. you give less effort to other things that you've made big but god's like mm, you just need you, to not lord. worry about that yes lord um the, the things where it is you know when you sit down and you have a discussion with your kids that's really good mm. when you just take time to go on a walk with your spouse when you on your own take the dog for a walk at the park and just relax that's important you mm. need to do that thank you lord. So when you let the lord show you the little things that he wants you to do it's not just create or make but just mm. for you where you spend your time and your energy yes thank you lord thank you it's you watching star wars with our youngest <laughs> <laughs> yeah the new clone war thing mm -hmm. uh, whatever you, that is lord um and then this area of i think there's people right now where they've had a desire in a direction You've had a desire in a direction. You've seen a need and you're waiting to move. Mm -hmm. And I pray Jesus. right now in Jesus' name that mm -hmm. you would be given a next step. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And that you would just walk in that direction. Thank you. You Jesus. would do that next step. And the next step might even be starting a project that you do not have the resources to finish. Considering the cost doesn't mean that you have everything necessary for the cost. It's just knowing what the cost Thank is. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. So you've considered the cost and you realize, I don't have enough to finish this, but in starting it, it's going to be an expression of faith. And I'm trusting that others will partner with me. And if they don't, that's between them and God. Mm. But it is right for me to start this. It is right for me to try to start the group, start the meeting, start the whatever, and if others don't join in, that's on them. But I'm going to provide for people to partner with the faith that is in me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank, Jesus you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Show us the seed that we have and how to plant that seed. And it's never too late. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Um, this i don't i think this could be like the most boring wednesday night and we could have been the most disconnected people i don't think that's it but even if it was but honestly if right now you just took that one thing that god put on your heart mm -hmm. and you walked it out this could be the most powerful mm -hmm. service message you've ever heard and not because of us but because you made room for that seed to be planted. Amen. So can you not just move on from this? Some of you, you're like, Lord, it's, like, it's okay. It's fine. You're moving. But others, there's a restlessness in you. And I don't want to take that away from you. I want you to wrestle with God. Mm. I want you to really take that and trust that this is important. Mm. You're going to take that faith step and trust me, like you say, but I don't know if I'm discerning right. Even if you move forward and maybe you weren't discerning right, that faith step is going to lead to a better faith step. It'll still help you. It'll still help you to know what to do next. Even if you're like, ah, that wasn't quite right. That faith step, God is going to be pleased. It's like a child learning to walk. Even if you mm -hmm. fall over in your next step, it's okay. Start learning to walk by faith. Amen. Let go of the rails and start walking by faith. Let God catch you. Let God pick you up. Let him lead you. And it will produce a harvest of righteousness. Amen. Love you guys. Mm -hmm.